Hello, welcome to MGF B10 Excel Workshop, Module 2, Introduction to the Basics of Excel. In this video, we will show you the very basics of Excel, including why learning Excel is important, how to navigate an Excel workbook, cell referencing, and cell anchoring. Excel is a digital spreadsheet developed by the company Microsoft in the mid-1980s. It has completely changed the business world in how data is stored, analyzed, and communicated. In other words, it is extremely important to know how to use Excel. Excel is used in many disciplines, but in this workshop, we primarily focus on the application and finance. Click on the following link, which will bring you to the Finance Lab webpage. Over the left-hand side of the page, click on Courses, and now select MGF B10. Here in this course webpage, you can find links to additional materials if you decide to dive a little deeper. And here at the bottom, we have also included some resources for VBA learning. VBA is a programming language designed for Excel. It is useful for computing large-scale applications when dealing with more complex data. VBA is not required for this assignment, but I can tell you that if you want to get into areas such as investment banking, trading, or financial analytics, VBA is almost certainly required. Now, I would ask you to open up the Excel workbook attached here at the bottom of the homepage. Click on the file and save it to your terminal. Once you finish downloading, you can open the file. Okay, so what we see here is an Excel file. At the bottom of the screen, you see what we call tabs. The tabs will lead you to different worksheets contained in this workbook. So again, a workbook may contain one or more worksheets, and each worksheet can be accessed by the tabs here at the bottom. This is how a worksheet would look like. It, cons it is consisted of vertical columns and horizontal rows. Each column is represented by an alphabet, as you can see here at the top, and each row is represented by a number, as you can see here on the left-hand side. A cell in a worksheet is the intersection between a column and a row. If I click this cell here on the spreadsheet, you can see the cell name or cell address displayed in the upper left corner of the screen. Keep in mind that each cell in a worksheet is unique and it will have its own address. In this case, I selected the cell M24. This concept of cell referencing is very important in Excel. I am going to demonstrate this through the next following example. Let's take a look at the next tab called Referencing. In the table here, we see a list of pop singers and their cost to have them over to UTSC for a gig. The goal is to find out the total deductions and the net pay for each singer. Let's begin with Beyonce. To find out her total deduction, we can insert the formula into the cell F3. We will tell Excel that we are inserting a formula by starting with the equal sign. Now, we would enter the formula equal 2000, which is from deduction A, the operation sign plus 80, which is from deduction B. Now, we hit enter on the keyboard and you shall get the total deductions of 2080 for Beyonce. So we can just basically repeat this three times to get all the total deductions from uh, all the individuals here. But imagine what happens if we have hundreds of rows of data. We won't want to repeat doing this hundreds of times. That would be very inefficient and prone to error. Instead, we do something called cell referencing. Instead of typing in the actual number, we type in the address of the cell that we want to be included in the formula. Instead of typing in the actual figure, we will use cell referencing, which is the address of deduction A, in this case, D3, plus deduction B, E3. 
as we type in the formula, you can see it's actually being color coded. Hit enter, now you get the same result. Although we get the same result from previous calculation, the underlying formula is completely different. We will quickly see the benefit here when we need to perform the same calculation in the following rows. Use hotkey Control C to copy the content of cell F3. Now you can paste them using hotkey Control V to the cells below F4, F5, and F6. If you're not familiar with Control C and Control V, you can also use the right click button on the mouse. Now I am going to perform another cell referencing calculation here for net pay. Select the cell G3, type in the equal sign, and it would equal to gross pay, which is C3, minus total deduction F3. Hit enter, and you shall get 97,920. Same thing, we will hit Control C for the shortcut to copy and paste to the lines below. So what happens under the hood here is that when you copy and paste a cell address, Excel will automatically shift the cell address to the next row. The same applies when you copy and paste across columns. So before we move on, it is very important that you review your formulas. You can see the formula here on the formula bar when you click on the cell. Even better, the hotkey to review the formula on a selected cell is the key F2 on your keyboard. So select F3 for Beyonce's total deduction, hit F2 on your keyboard. You see that it would review the formula here in the cell and also at the formula bar. So what you would do is you would hit escape key on your keyboard, maneuver to the next cell, hit F2 again to make sure that your formula is consistent. Again, hit escape, move down to the next cell, F2. As you can see, the reference cell is being shift down accordingly. And then to the last one, same thing. You want to make sure you go through each of these formula to make sure they are again consistent and they are calculated the way you want it to calculate. After we've learned cell referencing, you should make a habit of using cell referencing whenever it is possible. This helps you visualize the relationship between databases better and you can effectively scale up your spreadsheet as new data is being added. However, knowing cell referencing is only half of the battle. The other very important concept is called cell anchoring. In the previous example, we see that when we copy and paste a reference cell, the formula will be shifted depending on the pasted location. In this case, where you want a particular cell to be fixated, you will need to use cell anchoring. Let's look at the next example on the workbook. Click on the APR EAR tab. In this example, we will look at the conversion from annual percentage rate to effective annual rate. Indeed, we often come across APR in our daily lives, but how does that really convert to EAR? We've all learned the EAR equation from class, as shown here on the right hand side. We're now going to replicate the formula in the first line to compound every year. In cell B6, we will type the equal sign, open bracket, one plus, I over N, in this case, I, which is your APR in cell C4 divided by N, number of compounding period, which is one in C6. Closer bracket to the power of, so we'll use the little hat symbol, to the power of N, again, we will reference C6 minus one. Hit enter you get 0 0.06, which is 6%, which makes sense because if it is compounded only once a year, your e 
AR will equal to APR. Now let's try to copy and paste this line to the lines below. It doesn't look right. We have an error here on D7. So let's hit F2 on the keyboard and let's take a look at the formula. 1 plus C5, remember we're trying to reference the APR of 6% here, but what happened is that that 6% or C4 has been shifted down as expected because when we copy and paste formula, Excel will shift everything down as you are pasting down the rows. In this example, we want the number of compounding periods to shift down, but we don't want the APR reference C4 to shift. To fixate C4, we will need to anchor it by putting a dollar sign in front of the letter 4. So let's click Escape, go back to cell D6, hit F2, and let's make a change here in the formula. When we reference the 6% at cell C4, we need to put a dollar sign in front of number 4. After we make the appropriate adjustment to anchor cell C4 in the formula of D6, we hit enter and we get our 6% as usual. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and paste to the rows below. As you can see, now as I paste them across the rows, cell C4 in each of them is actually anchored to the 6% while the number of compounding periods are being shifted correctly. And as you can see, as the number of compounding periods increases, your effective annual rate will increase. There are a total of four anchoring modes. Using cell C4 as an example, when you don't have any dollar sign, there is no anchoring on the reference cell C4. Dollar sign C4 anchors the column only. C dollar sign 4 anchors the row only, like how we did it in the example. Dollar sign C dollar sign 4 will anchor both the column and the row. The hotkey to cycle between these modes is F4. Move your cursor to the cell reference in the formula bar. In this example, cell D6, click into the formula bar. Make sure your cursor is on the reference cell C4. Hit F4 on your keyboard multiple times, and it would cycle through these different anchoring modes. In this particular example, you can either anchor just a row or anchor both column and the row. The results will be the same. And don't forget to check your formula by hitting F2. This concludes the module 2.